Uh, welcome everyone to the uh, May 4th, 2016 Scarborough Town Council Workshop. And uh, we'll call things to order. Uh, we will take a roll call later. Uh, everyone is present. And uh, <coughs> Town Manager Tom Hall has uh, done an outline of the Council goals that we'll go through. Uh, we'll start with uh, the financial management and budget process uh, goal. It is probably a little bit premature to go through. However, we've got three Finance Committee members present. Uh, uh, and uh, it's been our busiest working group. And so I thought uh, perhaps uh, in uh, reviewing the <coughs> goals that we set for ourselves, at least we could offer the opportunity to let the Finance Committee initiate any comments that they might make on how the process is going. So why don't we start with the Chair. Sure. Um, so just briefly, the outcomes that were selected during our Council workshop in setting goals, there are total of my, I actually sorry, seven um, outcomes. The first was to pass the budget on the first vote. Uh, next to was incremental improvement in the service delivery, responsible on a realistic budget, sustainable tax increases, have agreed to metrics for budget performance, favorable comparisons with other communities as benchmarks, and ultimately eliminate the need for the budget to go to a vote. And by the way, that budget is the school budget that goes to the vote, um, not the municipal <coughs> budget that's approved by the town council. Um, some quick updates around that regarding the process. We've undertaken, as you know, the budget process that was uh, installed last year with some um, changes um, and new leadership on the school side as well. Um, things are going extremely well. We're uh, moving into the final stages at the Finance Committee level um, to go over that. We've been having our joint sessions. Um, I think that at least from an initial read and more maybe of a personal opinion, I think that we have a very good chance of achieving um, the first budget, um, or the first outcome, which is the uh, budget on the first vote. Um, I think that the budget that's been presented by the town manager and his staff, as well as the school department, um, obviously shows, um, I don't, I'm not sure if incremental is the right word, but there is definitely an improvement in services deliver being delivered across the board, including a, a, a pretty significant amount of educational investment of about $600,000. The responsible and realistic budget really is more of an internal um, aesthetic question to be asked of yourself and whether you feel that that work is um, being accomplished and we can maybe have that conversation after the budget process has been finalized, um, doing what we call maybe a lessons learned or what, is, what are our next steps conversation and that should be a conversation um, with both the town council's finance committee and the school board. Um, I believe that the presentation thus far has uh, shown a sustainable tax rate increase that is predictable. Um, both the manager and I gave presentations um, to our respective groups or the audiences in which we really emphasize that um, in order to have a predictable and sustainable tax rate, um, we need to look at um, how we project um, assess valuations and how we use that in our determination of the tax rate because of course that's our biggest factor. And, um, the manager will be presenting um, or commenting about that and how that those are set and the importance of them at our next finance committee meeting on May 11th. Um, the budget is currently proposed at 3.27%. So while um, it is not necessarily below the 3% that was originally um, identified in our actions, we're within that uh, kind of range, stone throw range, depending on some of the adjustments and um, other theories that can be applied both uh, on assessed valuation and other projects. Um, really, the next big step for the committee is really to take a look at and, and start that conversation. We did have a, we've already started that conversation with the school department around metrics, agreed to metrics around budget performance and how we can um, internalize or how we can um, then drive future decisions around not only incremental improvements in services but substantial investments in our community. Um, we have, uh, if I, correct me if I'm wrong, if, I don't want to overcharacterize it, but the last meeting of the joint finance committees we did accept metrics that um, the superintendent had put together. I believe there were five of them. Um, they are going to be published and we'll, of course, provide an update to you um, when um, that becomes a bigger topic for us to um, have a conversation because now the finance committee, our finance committee needs to determine what metrics do we want to measure the entire community 
and all of the other services and not just education. And then um, the, the issue around the elimination for the need to vote, that is of course on the ballot this year. Um, it's mandatory every three years, so it's not really a, um, a piece for us um, unless we decide to take a political position around that. Um, that's something um, the council can talk about, but, um, and that's because it is required by state law to have that question asked. Um, I personally hope that the citizens have trust in the council and will eliminate that need because we should be held accountable for our actions and our decisions and not necessarily constantly have to go out to vote, but that's a personal editorial. But I think that we are accomplishing every single one of these and doing very well and will achieve these by the end of this uh, this fiscal year, uh, sorry, this uh, um, calendar year for the town council. So I'm, I'm very confident that we'll achieve all of those through the finance committee. Great, thank you. Uh, Peter and then Chris, Peter, your thoughts on how we're doing? Um, I, I'd kind of echo everything Sean just shared. In, in addition to it, we've also started as part of that, you know, stability of the tax rate, actually started to talk about, gee, also at some point trying to look out beyond just this year and try to look what's coming down. You know, we know there's some factors out there. Um, so I just add that to the mix that that's been part of sort of another part of the goal that we're trying to achieve. So I just kind of echo everything Sean said. Right. Chris? Yeah, I, I would concur with those, those sentiments as well. Um, I would just caution that um, our expectations need to be very um, well defined because we are we are trying to do some pretty significant structural changes and I don't think one budget cycle is really enough to, to uh, check the box and call it good. I think this process requires uh, ongoing commitment on, uh, from both sides um, into the future as well. I think, you know, to Sean's uh, credit when he did the, the uh, community forum, the 135 uh, uh, plan I think is a, is a good one. Um, I still think it's, it's incumbent on all of us as councillors and school board members as well to ensure that we advocate properly for the budget to ensure that it passes the first time around. I'm hoping that we don't just take our vote and say, okay, now we've let it go and let people, uh, you know, kind of let it fall where it may. I, I, I think we really need to continue to work hard across the board for communications and I know we were going to try as joint finance committees to come together and, and try and get some, some, uh, some positives out there of what we think the major key takeaways are from the budget um, and I would hope that we would also get support from the other councillors who aren't necessarily on finance to support those ideas and those methods moving forward because I think how we present ourselves and, and the uh, you know, how we communicate that to the community is going to be key, uh, a key factor, not the key factor, but a key factor for sure in making sure that the budget passes the first time around. So I think we still, I, I'm very, very optimistic as, as Sean and, and Peter are. It's been a great process so far, but the work is far from done. <laughs> we, we've still got quite a bit to do to ensure that uh, on June 14th we're, we're where we will hope to be. Yeah. An important milestone on uh, May the 11th and talk about uh, uh, staffing. Mm -hmm. So that'll be uh, to the extent that any of the rest of us can join. That would be great to listen. Very important uh, as a part of the overall process. Other councillors who would like to? Kate. Um, I just wanted to make a point too that I had heard um, when you guys were talking two things. One, um, you know, that we had had concern in past councils of communication of the budget. And I, w I would have to say by far this year, communication of that budget has been as far exceeded um, anything that we've had in the past. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I know that there were a couple things that we tried last year, which was great. I mean, it's all trial and error, but um, I, that's one thing that I have not heard any complaints about anybody. Um, and you know, we'd hear it if there was a problem. <laughs> um, no one has been able to say that they're, they haven't been able to access the information or that you haven't held enough forums um, or right. workshops or groups. Um, everything has been publicized very well um, when you meet with the individual parties. Um, so for me, I, that, that has always been a big issue. I, I always felt that was really lacking Good. with this council and I, wouldn't, I would have to say that this year that was absolutely not the case. Um, uh, the only question I did have is you did touch on the, um, the metrics formula for the schools that they came out with that. What's your do you, have you formulated a final opinion on that or? We accepted, um, and I don't, I can't, um, it's not like a ratio analysis, right. it's, a, it's more, 
and um, it's more in-depth uh, narrative with some, with some statistics that go along with that. Um, so yes, we have accepted them at the joint session. Um, they were actually part of the, um, um, it is actually, I think it's in the budget document. It is. It's in the actual budget document and um, if I'm given time, I can, I'll find out the reference and I'll give you the reference, but it's in one of the narrative statements, it's a conclusion statement, and it talks about the five metrics. So we have accepted those uh, based on our conversation, and um, they will be uh, provided on the site by itself very easily. You can click on it and see what those are. We'll also include that as part of our overall analysis um, mm -hmm. later on. I guess on a personal level, um, as being head of the finance, yeah. Did you feel like, I know, I understand that we've accepted it, but do you feel like it's a good direction to go in? Um, absolutely, and the reason is that, um, so, uh, but, so that's kind of a... <laughs> yeah, I know, I'm so sorry, I'm not I'm, trying to put you on no, the no, spot. No, 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 I'm personally um, um, in the opinion that um, whatever metrics the school department chose or chooses, I am personally satisfied with their experience and expertise in doing that. The hard part is what comes next, and that is how do we use those metrics right. to craft a dialogue about the budget process and about the investments at all the levels. So it's about what we do next that's more important than where we are. Okay. And, it's, and by the way, it's going to be the same thing with Tom on the financial services side, mm -hmm. uh, though I have a little bit more of a, an opinion about which ones they should be. Um, that's going to be a big conversation that we need mm -hmm. to go over just as well. But um, I'm very happy, and I appreciate everything that the school department and the superintendent, because he's really the one that helped us craft those. Yeah, there had to be a lot more effort yep. this yep. year, so, okay, Good. sorry. Are there other That's comments, it. or should we move on to uh, communication? I just well, have one comment, and it, it was, it's, it's very minor, but I've heard um, the, uh, the statement made a couple times about <coughs> how the goal was for a, a tax increase of less than or equal to 3%, and I just wanted to reiterate that it's uh, around or below, consistently around or below, and I think that's just a subtle difference, but... Um, good, I'm good. And I'm, uh, it, 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 people, I think, use their own characterization sometimes, which is similar, but is not exactly the same. Uh, the, uh, but in, in the interest of trying to cover all of them, let's move to uh, external uh, uh, communication. Sure. I'm going to distribute a quick little infograph here. I already did this Oh, you did? Yeah. You all had it? Okay. I'm I beg your pardon. There are copies <laughs> up here if anyone in the public wants to see them. I think. Oh, they're on the chair. Yeah, they're right over here on the chair. Uh, this is intended just to give a, a quick little highlight of progress we've made so far. And keep in mind, we're maybe a third of the way through the year, so there's still work to be done. Uh, I need to acknowledge Karen Martin's efforts. Mm -hmm. uh, Karen is really the one, the glue that's kind of held us together. Uh, she's been working with Jean Marie and I and a, a number of my staff members to really launch these things, to get beyond the talk. Um, and if you don't mind, I might invite Karen up for just for a quick uh, overview. Is, is yeah, that okay? Or that would be great. Thank you. Or Jean Marie could present, and Karen's there <laughs> playing backup. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. not far. <laughs> yeah, yeah that's Jean Marie, why don't you launch it? And uh, uh, I've been very pleased with what we've been able to accomplish in a short period of time. Mm -hmm. As you know, um, we've been tweaking the website over time. And we found that most people, when they're looking for information in the first place, they do go to is Scarborough.org. Uh, for information. Um, today we did send out, I think it was today, the e-news. Uh, it's new, fresh, look, revamped. We had, uh, hold on here, delivery rate of, eight, of 95%, which means that it didn't get bounced through spam. 37% um, opened it, which is that big, because I'm I'm one that never opens them. I just look at them without opening things. Did, so did folks receive that today? Yes. Okay. So you've seen it. Yes. All right. I printed copies in case you hadn't had a chance. And then the click through, which which I know from my own business, is 23 percent. You're lucky if you get eight to nine percent doing what we call click through, which means that they open it. They aren't just scanning it. They're actually going to something. Um, we had uh, and Karen, here with me. We had one person who emailed. Who said she liked really liked the yeah. email? We had a person email saying they liked it, and people were hitting on budget. And what were the ones who were I'm sorry. Calendar had the largest. Okay. Okay. Yeah, calendar, Eastern Trail, yeah. and budget documents in that order pretty closely matched. About 20% of the folks were interested in that subject matter. And that was just today. I mean, it just went out today, this morning. 
so I, I'm very pleased with that. Uh, Facebook, that seems to be working well. I know when things come out on Facebook, I'm sharing it on my own, either, well, actually both my town council and personal Facebook pages, and I encourage any of you who have Facebook to do so, because it just pushes it further. Um, and then that calendar is just unbelievable. What you guys do with that calendar? I've had several people comment to me personally about how it's easy to use. Anybody, you can contribute something or you can ask for something to be put on the calendar. We don't put yard sales or garage sales unless it's benefiting a charity or some nonprofit or whatever. But we do have SEDCO. Thankfully, they're uh, the administrators for it, so you can't put something wacky up there and expect it to go up. But we'll, we're willing to look at events. Chris? So I, I was curious to know, are we, are we seeing an increase in, in people asking to post things, or are we kind of stabilized? That's a great things? question. We are. We, we posted, um, Stephanie Cox and I posted a lot of things up front yep. um, just to get people interested in those and to possibly the calendar. Yeah. Um, but yes, we are starting to get um, more community services, types of people, community organizations starting to use it, and we've been working through um, Joanne Sizemore to get the school uh, to start using it, and they've already developed some policies with regard to that. Um, so you should see it continue to be used, and that is the, no matter how beautiful it looks, if people don't use it, yeah. it right. it's all for yeah. not, so we're trying to encourage people to do that. And, and, and just as a follow-up, is there something we could do for, um, you know, a, a, an email or, or a newsletter or something that says, hey, you know, if you're a community service group or a church or something, please go to the, you know, post your information here on this calendar. Is there some kind of outreach that we can do to try and drive we'll usage? Or we'll use, we'll cross-pollinate, use yeah. a newsletter to drive business back. Okay. Uh, the real key to this is making sure, and I think we have a very robust content-rich website and is really pushing traffic back to richer content. Uh, using all these other sources just to catch interest and make people aware, uh, but really drive them always back to where they can find more. Right. Right. Seems to right. Has everybody sort of checked out the, the new calendar? Mm -hmm. I don't know if you yeah. have, but it's, uh, I got a comment today, a person went and they went, wow, yeah. that's just a fabulous resource for the community. So I, yeah. I think it's going to be a hit, and obviously, uh, Karen, that was a great job with that. Yeah. Uh, Comments on our external communication uh, progress to meeting our uh, our goals, Peter. Yeah, sure. A couple of different thoughts. Um, <coughs> one on, on communicate. I'll kind of lump them all together, both internal and external. On internal, uh, Bill, really do appreciate you calling before each council meeting just to check in to see if there's any confusion or answers. That's great. I, I would echo what I just heard. I think the budget, budget portal this year worked really, really well. Yeah. A lot of people went there. We had the same information. That was a huge improvement. I think some work in progress, and when I get out through our list, would be, you know, we had committed to no surprises, improving trust, improving transparency. I still think those are kind of works in progress. Um, and certainly on the external communication, I, I think we've kind of made a commitment to each other, and it it's getting somewhat complex and when we're working in the external world, external world and we do different things, I think it's really important that we clarify if we're speaking as an individual, mm -hmm. whether we're speaking as a candidate because we have some candidates for office, mm -hmm. or whether we're speaking on behalf of the council. And I, I think we're not keeping those lines really clean that we committed to each other we would. <clears throat> and I think it does send some mixed messages to our constituents. We're not really sure whether it's a council position or a personal. So. Those, to me, are sort of works in progress. Mm -hmm. um, as far as surprises, um, so for me, just as it struck me, I, we, we do have some political candidates, but I found out about them reading. People came up to me on the street and said, hey, I hear so-and-so is running for office. That I, so people on the street knew it before we did as fellow council members. I'd just like to request that if we're individually thinking about doing something that may impact the whole council, that the council probably should hear about it as soon as they can, just so they have a heads up. Those are just some observations for me. Great. Others? Comments? I know that uh, uh, I thought the retreat, I, I had some doubts about the retreat, but I think the retreat, as it turned out, set the right tone. I really did think that it, uh, it committed us collectively mm -hmm. to a, a series of goals. Uh, in terms of working together and communicating, uh, 
I've got to applaud uh, all of you for the, I think the debate has elevated. It's courteous, but it's more vigorous than it has been in my prior experience. Uh, I think people had a concern about speaking uh, uh, when uh, they had a concern or an issue. Yet I've had counselors call me and say, well, i got a concern about that. Peter just said, he, and he, it's that sort of openness that I think is important to, to express to, to us. Uh, certainly, I think I've benefited from calling each of you uh, uh, every two weeks because you always have something that you want to talk about that maybe isn't on my agenda. And so I think that's very beneficial. So, uh, so uh, a couple, couple things. I'm a little communicationally challenged at present. I broke my phone on Sunday. and <laughs> <laughs> That's incredibly that's isolating. A good thing. I, don't, I don't Yeah, maybe. <laughs> that would bother me. Um, so um, anyway, if, you're call, if you called me, I'm sorry I didn't answer. Um, the... Um, other thing that I had is one of the things that we have for an action is uh, increased opportunities uh, for dialogue with community, and I think I'd add that to uh, Peter's note of works in progress. I think we've had a lot of opportunity, but I don't know if we've necessarily increased it. And Other comments? Sure. Yeah, so um, one, one of the things that I took personally, I mean, I chose uh, one of the actions um, that I did personally, which is the one-on-one -on -one meetings and the coffees that I do with you guys, so I appreciate you taking the time to that I even do it with the manager. Um, regarding the communication piece, whether it's internally, even externally, there's, there's, there's a secondary part to this, and that is that we need to not only evaluate how others are contributing to the communication, but how we contribute individually to that communication. Because you know we live in a pretty complex society where, um, for some reason, a lot of people think that they need to know about personal decisions that people make or personal comments that they make or whatever they may be. And for, you know, different reasons, that information isn't always or shouldn't always be shared, and that's a family decision at the same time. So long as it doesn't cross a line where you're making a public statement that says, you know, the Scarborough Town Council is doing X or Y or has this opinion, um, if it's a person, so I think that we have to be re respectful that we live in the real world, and the fact is, people make decisions that um, you're not going to know about. I'm not, you know, I make a lot of decisions. There's a lot of things that you guys don't know about, and you're not going to know about it, and I'm not going to share it. Um, and I think that we just need to be mindful of that as well, and and be the adult that we are, and, and being able to say, as long as it doesn't cross that line where something is being said that is really outrageous or crosses that kind of ethical line of, uh, I think you know what I'm saying? I'm I not think respect no for one's personal life, and if I know something, I'm very reluctant to share it with, with, with the public, because I think that the counselor is the one who ought to do that, and make that judgment, whether it's health issues or, or what they're doing in their personal life, but I, I very much think that separating out and respecting that we each have a personal life, I think, is important. Chris. Yeah, and I think, you know, just to kind of reiterate both, both Peter and Sean's point, um, I think that could be subjective at times. Mm -hmm. And, you know, being in a position where I, I am, uh, to be the first time I'll say this behind, and probably the last time I hope I am a candidate moving forward, <laughs> I would hope that uh, my communications with you all, if there is an issue or a question from a personal standpoint, please let me know. I mean, I've, I've said it before privately and, and with communications. I think that's part of our communication uh, respect and protocol is, is rather than, uh, you know, kind of not mention something or kind of hold it in, if I have a challenge with what a counselor is doing, I, part of my responsibility is to reach out directly to that counselor and say, hey, uh, help me understand what you're doing here or why you're doing it so that I don't conceive it being something different. I think that communication is always a two-way street. It's the person sending it, the person receiving it, and I, I think we also have an obligation to do that individually. So, Jim yeah, I mean, I would agree uh, with what Chris saying also, as people know, I'm also a candidate for office, another office. Uh, you so are? Yeah, and, and uh, <laughs> I made that decision, and, and it's like anything, you, you that's not something you necessarily announce to the whole world until you choose to do so, uh, for strategic reasons and whatever. Um, and I know I sent a, an email recently, and I started it right off to one of our representatives saying, I'm not speaking for the town council. I'm speaking for myself personally as a town counselor. 
with my knowledge of investment in energy uh, and what we've done in this in this town and also as for my position on the main municipal. Um, so I make it very clear up front how I'm speaking because I agree. I, I don't speak for the town council, but I do speak as an individual town councilor. And as an individual town councilor, I certainly have the right to express my opinions. Um, that doesn't end when I walk through the through the door as a town councilor. So that's where I come from with that. Some comments. Good. I think we'll uh, adjourn the workshop, and uh, uh, I think it would be good to uh, certainly have uh, a, a finance goals review coming probably late summer or when, when the finance committee and the council feels appropriate, the town manager feels appropriate. So I think we'll try to do this again uh, later in the year. Thank you. You shut it down so fast. I was going to mention how you do such a good job at council.